Valve anti-cheat seems to be actually doing something, and people are now reporting that cheaters are getting banned, both after and during suspected matches. It's been a long time coming. Counter-Strike 2 didn't seem to have an anti-cheat at all for a while, enabling blatant spin-botting and other behaviours that should have been fairly easy to ban. And I've known blatant cheaters to have got away with it undetected for many matches and thus ruining the experience for many, many people. And that's a problem, because eventually the non-cheaters are going to stop playing, since there's no point in playing a game if all you're going to do is to be entertainment for someone else's cheating account. So now Vax seems to actually be active, time to answer a few questions with some fairly obvious answers. First question. Is this it? No, of course not. What a silly question. Cheat and anti-cheat is an endless game of cat and mouse. One side develops new or better tricks than the other has to counter. So it'll never be done, there will always be cheaters in Counter-Strike, and hopefully there will always be improvements to VAC. But the current ban wave feels empowering because, well, coming from seemingly no anti-cheat at all, so anything feels like a huge improvement. But second, it shows us that Valve hasn't been neglecting us and has been cooking, and has now finally deployed some stuff that appears to be working. And for extra proof that this isn't it, while the game I lost finally had a player VAC banned, the actual blatant cheater remains undetected. So there's at least one active cheater still out there, and probably a fair few more than that. Second question, what has Valve done? Anti-cheat is shrouded in secrecy, so I can only speculate on what's been happening. I suspect the reason it took so long for Valve to deploy this is because Valve has been collecting data from millions of cheaters in millions of matches, training their detection systems, and letting cheat makers learn the ins and outs of the Source 2 engine before finally deciding on the best way to tackle these new cheats on their new engine. There were reports a while ago that people were getting unfairly banned for high sensitivity mouse movements, so maybe Valve decided to put cheat detection on hold until they could do a better job of it. That's why I think it's taken them this long. And also because Valve is just a small indie company with a handful of staff. Third question. Kernel level anti cheat? No. Valve's anti cheat is notoriously not installed deep inside your PC like some form of benevolent malware. So while Valve's official servers of CS2 don't use it, other games do, and some third party sites for Counter Strike use kernel based anti cheat as well. And people rightly or wrongly think that because it's kernel level and that it has more access to your computer, that it should do a better job of detecting more types of cheats. Valorant, with its Vanguard anti cheat, is notorious for going down this route of anti cheat. But Valve hasn't done this. They instead prefer to tackle the issue of cheating in other, more novel ways. They have multiple things working together, so they have Valve Anti-Cheat as the typical kind of anti-cheat system that you'd see in games, but then they also have powerful servers, originally with 3,456 CPUs, that are all continuously scanning all the matches played in Counter-Strike from every player's perspective, seeking unusual behaviours in players and how they aim and stuff. And then they have Overwatch for people to review these suspected cases and to judge it for themselves. And then there's the trust factor and all that stuff as well. So Valve tackles cheating using various methods, which all seem to have been getting deployed over the last few weeks. An older post from a Valve Valve employee explains all this quite nicely, saying that cheats are tailored to get around any anti-cheat method, so rather than a fixed detection, they believe AI is the answer, one that's continually being retrained on the latest matches and cheating playstyles. I also like the idea of VAC Live being able to ban players mid-match, since it prevents those tools that used to be used in CSGO that would crash servers to prevent Overwatch reviews. And I guess it makes it more difficult to cheat knowing that your performance is being monitored in real time. Fourth question, how many people have been banned? Now this is an interesting one, and I don't think there's an easy way of knowing this. Valve will know it, but all we can see is that the game's Steam Charts page does show a drop in player counts over these last few days. It could just be that the weather's getting warmer and people are going out more. But it could also mean that just a bunch of cheaters have got banned, stopped playing, and went outside for themselves. There are a few sites online which attempt to track the number of VAC bans. I don't think these represent the entire player base, but it's a handy way to see how active VAC is, and spikes indicate a ban wave of some sort. I'm not going to try and single out specific dates, but the general gist of things is that VAC has awoken from a temporary slumber and has been kicking and banning people in the last week or so. This recent wave is not actually that big a ban when compared with a few of the days that we got in February and a few around the start of November last year, but any ban wave we get has got to be good news. It's also interesting to see that most accounts getting banned are about three years old, whereas you'd probably expect most bans to occur on the newest accounts that have just been set up solely for cheating. I wonder if these new accounts are underrepresented on this site because those accounts haven't existed for long enough and in enough games to get submitted to this site to get tracked. CS Stats have their own ban tracking tool, and they distinguish between game bans and back bans. We can see since the start of the year, 97% of games where somebody's been banned has only had one cheater inside that game. 28% of cheaters get banned within the first 24 hours of their latest match, 
But it doesn't mean it was their last match that got them banned, and it could just mean that about a quarter of banned accounts are just active at the time of being banned, since the average length was 20 days since the last match was played. Which is good, because it means that all the cheaters who maybe stopped playing before this new VAC wave took place could still get banned based on past performance. I think delayed bans is an effective and terrifying feature of anti-cheat. It is interesting that the average stats of cheaters looks remarkably normal. 43% headshots, 51% win rate, though a KD ratio of 1.5 is rather high. So these figures could be skewed by, say, if these cheaters had low trust factor and typically put in matches with other cheaters on the other team and so on. So as usual, stats are cool, but you have to temper your expectations as to what they could mean. I'm sure there are lots of other subtle things about these figures you could read into as well, but I'm not going to bother. CS Stats also tweeted saying access to this data soon, so I expect follow-up news shortly. On vaclist.net they have a bunch of latest banned accounts, and I thought it would be cool to go through all of these and to see if they were game or vac banned, and if so then how long ago it occurred. However, these bans don't appear to be in chronological order, they don't always indicate whether the VAC or game ban was the latest, and not even which game they received the ban on. But from what I saw, it does look like a lot of VAC banned players on this list were caught out on the same few days within the last week or so, so we're probably Counter-Strike players. So yeah, I don't really know how many cheaters got banned or what caused it, but it looks like this is the start of Valve ramping up CS2's anti-cheating systems. And another great consequence of this is that we'll get loads of great content over on VAC porn of cheaters feeling upset and angry and betrayed that they were finally caught cheating and lost their accounts and a bunch of expensive digital items along with it. But while we're waiting for those new posts, let's revisit a few of the classics. One spammed Valve's forums because he was so upset that he had been banned. And this one's an oldie, but a goodie, where one person said he was a lawyer and didn't agree to the terms and conditions that allowed him to get banned. It's hard not to feel some sympathy for these players, and how upset they must feel that they can no longer ruin the game for others. Ripe. 